We have the basic idea. We see the connection with the receptive fields as demonstrated by Hubel and Wiesel. And now we're going to start to put all the ideas together, the basic architecture of CNN. So let's review the high level description again, and we're going to do that in more detail. So we started out with feature. And there's a hierarchical extraction of features. And then we go to classification. The classification is done with our dense neural network, as we did before, a few layers. Dense, weights, ReLU, dense, weights, ReLU, and then out to a soft max layer. Say if we're doing the digits, that'll have 10 neurons, and then use soft max to classify. Let's look at the features. What we saw in the video was some rather rapid calculation. I'll explain it in two dimensions. If we have in two dimensions, an array of data so I'm drawing just this corner of the array in general the array will be volumetric I'm just looking at one plane so we're going to do you guessed it a three by three situation so I'm going to put data in here that's really easy for me to do so one zero one zero zero one zero one zero and the mask that I'm going to use I don't know what it is by initialize it I'm just going to show the operation I'll do 10 0 minus 10 10 these are zeros and I'll do again 10 0 minus 10 so what you do is you take this mask, this, this collection of weights, and you overlay it on this sub piece of the array. So this three by three uh, overlays that. So you take 10 times one, zero times zero, minus 10 times one, and, and you continue, zero times zero, 10 times zero, one times zero, so that's gonna give me nothing. And then 10 times zero, zero times one, 10 times zero, that's gonna give me nothing, and you add them all up. So you do a multiply add, ma. Then you shift over to look at the next piece of the data, 888. Eight, eight. So now we have this piece, 018018108, and we take this and we shift it over. So now the 10 will be here, the 0 will be here, and the minus 10 will be on the 8. We multiply them and add them and proceed as I described previously. So the entire algorithm is shift, multiply, add. That's the basis. We've just seen how to do the feature extraction. Let's return to the video from Google. And here you can see a cascading of the convolution steps. So we start out now with three by three by three by four. So we have four layers and the mask is a total of three times three, nine times four, 36 numbers. You do the multiply add and assign it to the output layer at the next layer down. And then you slide this over the entire block and you get the first output layer. And there are six output layers and four input layers. So these are related to the architectural design. Then we could take this and apply a two by two by six, multiply, add, shift it, multiply, add, and shift it, and 10 output layers. So what we're going to get 
is something like this. And clearly, uh, we can see that we're skipping some points here, so there's been some subsampling. And now we do a one by one, and we have outputted from the six layers, 10 layers, and so you can see we have a volumetric expansion and a reduction in the lateral dimensions. And that's the characteristic type of architecture that we're going to see when we're doing this progression for feature extraction. Now, what do we do after we've done the convolution? So we're going to have a layer of we're going to have some layer like this. After doing that multiply add and creating the new feature map, we're going to apply ReLU to each one of the outputs. So that's a ReLU step. So every one of these, we apply ReLU. And remember, ReLU is 0 and goes like that. This is ReLU. And this is the input, say we call it z. So ReLU of z equals z when z is positive. So we know about that. So we ReLU each element of the output feature map that's been obtained by the shift multiply add algorithm. It's volumetric in general, not just planar. So we've got a new feature map obtained by the shift multiply add algorithm with our in general three-dimensional mask that is a receptive field. We ReLU that entire result and now we subsample it and that's called max pooling. So when we do this, this is how the operation works. It's fairly straightforward. This is our output of ReLU for some Array. One, two, I'll make it easy. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. The way the max pooling works is for each planar result that we have, we take a two by two window and What's the maximum of this? Four. We slide the window over by two. So we slide over to this window. I'll do it like that. And that's five, six, eight, nine. So the maximum of that is nine. Now, we slide the window over here. So uh, another zigzaggy thing. Hmm, I got a problem. So let's, because there's no data here. So let's think about this. We've moved the window over by two. By the way, that movement has a name. It's called stride. It's the shift, if you like, in the multiply add. So when you see stride, it says how far to shift. The stride here is two. Now, what do I do with this? Well, if you want the result to have the same dimension as if, because you're subsampling by two, so we have one, two, three, four, five. If we had six, six divided by two would be three, so we could then fill this in, but we don't have any data here, so you put in zeros, and that's called padding. So sometimes to make things work, you'll put in one layer of padding, pad equal one or pad equals two, all around to make the dimensions the same. If we do that, the answer is 10. That reduces the number of data in each dimension by two. But to make up for that, we enhance the number of feature maps so we don't lose information. After we go through this hierarchical feature extraction, we get to a certain level, four by four by some large number, 
and then we take that and turn it into a vector that's however long it is, and that's the input to one or more, you can see I missed the word more there, one or more dense vectors in an MLP neural network architecture that we all know, and then feeds to a final layer, uh, say 10 if we're doing digit classification for softmax. So there's, there's an example there, you can see it, I'll try to boost it up a bit. So there's my final block on the left, and you may feed it into a vector, then in this case they didn't have any layers, they went directly from that flattened layer to the soft max. And then on the right, something we never do is that's the cheapy way, is they do the average of each layer, feed it directly to the soft max, and then apply the classification. And you can see the little cartoon in the corner where it says cheapskate. So be careful, we usually do something on the left. With that in mind, we can now do a detailed example with numbers how it would proceed.